Hi, my name is Rob Williams. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Food Science and Technology at Virginia Tech. And with the support of LC North America, we recently performed a study to look at the recovery methods used for recovery of salmonella from low water activity food products. As any scientist knows, the data used for any decision making is only as good as the quality of that data from the actual research project itself. So the purpose of this study is to improve or make sure that we have improved data quality from the aspect of being able to recover all viable cells from treated peppercorns and cumin seeds. So what we did in this study is we did a couple of things. First, we compared uh, two different overlay methods. One is a traditional overlay method whereby uh, TSA is poured into a plate and allowed to solidify. The sample is then placed on to the TSA and allowed to sit for three hours. And then finally, a selective medium, in this case XLT4, is deposited on top of the uh, solidified inoculated TSA. Okay. The second method we looked at was called the solid overlay method. Okay. And so in this method, we had solidified XLT4 medium, whereby a sample was placed directly onto the XLT4 medium, and then a solid portion of TSA medium was immediately placed on top of it. Okay? And so when we compare these two different methods, we see that there are differences in the way that salmonella is recovered. Okay? So what we find from the results are that XLT4 itself as a medium to recover salmonella from inoculated peppercorns and cumin seeds is not an effective way of assessing all the viable populations that are present. Okay? We also found that the solid auger overlay method did not perform as well as the traditional overlay method. So we chose to do a traditional overlay method for the remainder of studies. The remaining goal for this study was to look at supplementing the TSA portion of the uh, traditional overlay in order to determine if the supplements would allow for better recovery of salmonella that had been applied and inoculated onto um, peppercorns and cumin seeds. Okay? And so we used uh, two different types of methodologies here. One is we treated the peppercorns with steam. Okay? The other is we treated the peppercorns with ethylene oxide. Both methods used to control salmonella in uh, spices. Okay? So for the steam treated samples, the, we used XLT4 alone, the traditional overlay, and then the overlay supplemented with sodium pyruvate plus yeast extract, 3,3-thiodipropionic acid, glycerol phosphate, lactate, mannitol, and then all of them combined together. Okay? And so we did this for both peppercorns and cumin seeds. What we found in this study was that for the most part, the best method included using the uh, traditional overlay. So with the traditional overlay, and in some cases, one case with the peppercorns, uh, we were able to recover better when we added 3,3-thiodipropionic acid. So it was this supplementation, the TDP plus uh, traditional auger overlay, that allowed for us to get the best recovery when salmonella was steam treated after being applied on the peppercorns. We didn't see those effects in cumin seeds, but we did see that the traditional auger overlay performed better than XLT4 in every case. Okay? So for the uh, studies looking at the effect of recovery methods on uh, populations or recovery populations of salmonella from ethylene oxide treated spices, we used a, a few different supplements. Okay? So we used XLT for, again, the traditional auger overlay, okay? sodium pyruvate with yeast extract, 3,3-thiodipropionic acid, glycerol phosphate, ATP, magnesium, and guanine. And so we really saw no relationship on the ethylene treated spices on improved recovery of salmonella when any of the supplements were used. But we did see the relationship that the traditional auger overlay was superior to the use of XLT4 alone for recovery of salmonella. So improving the recovery of salmonella from treated spices is critical to proper validation. Validations are based typically on log reductions. And if we're not assessing the log populations of salmonella correctly, we are likely to overestimate the effect of a process. 
So by improving recovery of salmonella from treated spices, that allows us to properly validate these processes that are being tried for salmonella control in low moisture foods, in this case specifically spices. This particular study I think is important for scientists who are working in this area regardless of, of whether or not they are involved in academia, government or industry because it allows them to be able to evaluate studies that have been done previously to determine if their recovery methods were adequate in order to be able to pronounce the levels of log reductions that have been given. It also allows them to modify their protocols moving forward in doing validation studies to ensure that they're recovering the highest number of viable salmonella that remain in the product.